I've got something very exciting inside of this box. Also, I just recovered from a flu, so my voice isn't the best, but let's do it. It's a camera that I've been talking about a lot. Definitely, if people ask me which camera I would recommend when they start out using film cameras, or for those who like to be a bit more serious about photography. Also, I wanted to talk about the new Polaroid that has just been launched, and I see a lot of mixed reactions. But let's cut the intro, get this box unboxed, and start the episode. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk It Over. And he also put a roll of film in. That's nice. Black and white film, Foma Pen 200. Never shot that before, so it's gonna be interesting. So, that's going to be the Canon AE1 in silver. It has been a while since I've had this camera in my hand. Which, like I said, is a camera that I recommend a lot, but it has been a while since I've held it in my own hands. It's the camera when you hold it, you know that it's made well, it has a pretty nice weight to it and it's quality. I've got mine with a 50mm, which is also a focal length that I haven't shot in a while, so that is also pretty interesting. Can't wait to shoot it and also this FOMO pen so interesting i always shoot tricks or hp5 as a black and white film so yeah to be totally transparent with you guys this camera and the film and the lens were sent by josh from jfr film which is a camera shop full of analog magic he's based in the uk but he's working worldwide go check it out if you're interested i'll put a link down in the description to his website we are collaborating on a future episode all about this bad boy, the Canon AE1, so stay tuned for that. He also put something else in this box. It says your camera, uh, Canon AE1, with the serial number and the date purchased. And it's checking a lot of boxes like light seals replaced, film advanced properly, exposure counter functioning, etc, etc. So it checks out a lot of boxes like a CLA does. And on the back it says tips and tricks for using your SLR, basics of aperture and shutter speed. So this is really nice if you're beginning with photography. There are some tips and tricks on the back of this flyer. What do you call this? So that's nice. And also the film, of course. Good job, Josh. Also, this lens came in its original box with papers and everything in it. Nice. It's looking so nice, can't wait to shoot it. So, with this camera out of the way, let's talk about the Polaroid. What is it? The i2. Of course, I haven't shot it yet, but I did do some research and I asked you guys on Instagram what your first thoughts are on the camera. And a lot of different reactions for sure. The most frequent one is that you guys are pretty excited, but it's pretty pricey. So let's see what Polaroid has to say about this camera. Engineered and designed for craft, it's the first analog instant camera with built-in manual controls. Pair it with the sharpest ever Polaroid lens and the unique chemistry of Polaroid film. Which brings us to the most controversial thing about this camera and that is that it still has a plastic lens and not a glass one. I am by no means a technical engineer, but my first thoughts are also that glass is always better than plastic. There's a reason why the best lenses for cameras and telescopes and microscopes are made of glass. But we live in a different time and sometimes technology is ahead of us. So I watched the video from Polaroid, which is called the story behind the Polaroid i2 instant camera. And here they state the following. The aim was to achieve the largest aperture and we wanted to select the highest quality materials. 
which is why we chose to use EP3500 as a material. It's manufactured in Taiwan and they say currently Taiwan is known for its world-class optical manufacturing and that it surpasses the lenses from the SX70, which is an older Polaroid camera. And they also said just because it's glass, it doesn't mean it's better. So with all that information, I still don't know if that's true or not, but how could I know? But I'm an optimistic person, so let's trust them on this one. Also, let's be honest guys, who's picking up a Polaroid camera to get the sharpest images? You're not buying an instant camera for the perfect results. That's just not what it's meant for. It's fun, it's tactile, and it's one of a kind. That's what's making it special. I feel like this camera is made for people who like to shoot manual instant cameras like the Polaroid SX70, which is old. So there's a new improved version with all of the techno techno what? technological advantages. And that's really interesting to me as I have been shooting the Polaroid now for a couple of years and I really like to take the next step to a manual instant camera. And that brings me to another thing that a lot of you guys said to me and that is why would you need all of those manual controls? Doesn't that defeat the aim of an instant camera? And I do think that there is a point to be made there because a lot of people like the ease of use of an instant camera. Just point and shoot. And there are a lot of cheaper options for that, like the Instax cameras or the Polaroid Now. But there are a lot of people also who like to have more control over their images. And this camera is aimed for them. It's the same as using a point and shoot camera instead of using a manual one. So now there's an instant camera for everyone. At the first glance, I think it's beautifully designed. It looks clean and also the LCD looks really good. And after seeing some videos about it, the focusing and the light meter must feel like a charm. But I haven't decided yet if this is something that I wanna invest my money in. That all depends on how serious I am on shooting more Polaroids in the future. We will see, but for now it's just wishing that I had one. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this new Polaroid. Would love to hear some more opinions about it and maybe you already ordered one. Also, if you would like to see some results, check out the video from Willem Verbeek or Matt Day. I think that they did a pretty good job on explaining their first touch on the camera. And that's going to wrap up this episode. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Peace.